1 Corinthians 2. 1, the first four chapters of Corinthians is dealing with one issue over and over again. Secretarianism. People were saying, I'm of Paul, no, I'm of Apollos, no, I'm of Cephas, no, I am only follow Jesus. They were dividing over personalities and giftings. And chapter 2, he's really dealing strong about there is a wisdom, there is a mystery. There's wisdom we speak to the mature, but I, then he ends up the chapter saying, I can't even talk to you with this wisdom because you're not mature because you're walking around with envy, strife, and division. You're just fleshly, carnal. And then he makes that statement that the eyes have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered the heart of man the things that God's prepared for those who love him. But the Spirit's revealing it. We, the, the only way the things of God can be given to us is A, first, God wills, the Father wills, to drag us to Jesus. No, we, no one can come to the Son except the Father draws him. And the word is drags him. How many have been dragged to Jesus in your life, right? You know, you're fighting. Every, yeah. And nobody can know the Father except the Son who wills to reveal him. So there has to be a sovereign initiation, uh, intentionality. That's why everything in the kingdom is a mystery until it's revealed. And it's a mystery that was set in motion before the time began, but it has been reserved for us so that we might enter into the fullness of the glory of Jesus. Every mystery that is unveiled becomes a journey of, of, of apprehension. You see it first, and then it's tested. Everything of faith has to be tested. Otherwise, it's still a possibility, but it has to become a point where one, at one point we say, I'm going to believe the word of God even if I never see it, never experience it. I'm just going to accept, accept that it's truth now, and I'm going to thank God for it and rejoice in it, and I'm going to experience it in the spirit because it was given to me by the spirit. If I never eat again, I will live by the words that speak out of his mouth. But I will, I will, be, I will come to the other side. Um... Let me see. Uh, we have so little time. I don't want to go off on trying to do one thing that now the Holy Spirit's doing something different. When the, when the Spirit comes and we are born again, we have the, the, we have the opportunity and the, and the ability by the Spirit to understand the Word of God and to begin to hear God's voice in the Word of God and to grow inside of that discovery. And we have to, we have, we are being brought into a place where we come into submission to the scripture. We don't submit to this, to other things, we submit to the scripture. That's why reading the Bible, I believe more and more, I wish I'd have read the Bible a lot more than I do, than I did. And I wish I would have moved from topical reading and just kept staying inside of an immersion. But then again, I used to read the Bible to do it. And when I learned I could read the Bible to enjoy it, and experience the Lord, I began to go, oh, this is a lot more fun. Because there he is. Oh, there he's Jesus. And you watch him move and all that. The things of the spirit to the natural man, the unregenerated man, is foolishness. Um, and the things of the spirit to a spiritual person are placing truth upon truth. And you're learning God. You're learning his ways. You're learning his truth about who he is and about his son. And chapter 3 talks about, everybody will read this tomorrow, that uh, you don't, that the foundation was laid. Now you've got to pay attention to what you build with because at the end, everything's going to go through fire to see what substance it was built with. And if it withstands the fire, then you'll receive a reward. If, you, if the fire burns up what you spent your life doing, then you will still be saved through the fire, but you'll have no reward for the work you did. And then chapter 4 gets into this whole idea that, uh, you know, we can keep trying to grow our Christianity in a worldly paradigm, or we can accept the fact that we are in Christ, and all that is Christ is ours, and we're not to be a part of this group or that group, and we don't need to have a certain group to be a part of anything because we have it all in Christ. And, and if we get so 
fortunate to be called apostles and we'll probably be the last in the parade and have the worst treatment and we'll have to learn to bless everybody who curses us, we'll have to endure persecution. But so it doesn't matter because the end is coming and then all the praise that we ever wanted to hear will come from God. And we'll go, you know, I understand now what I did and where I was and what happened to me and why that happened and I released that person, I forgave this people, I don't need it to happen, I got God. And they'll come, uh, I really believe there's coming a, a great transference of kingdom wealth into the body of Jesus Christ, the heavenly wealth, the heavenly resource. So let me say, that's just an overview. I don't wanna, I, I wanna say what I saw. What I saw was Ephesians 1, chapter one, again, growing ever richer. So when we meditate the scripture, and don't try to do the scripture, just allow it to become a, a, a movie to watch, we can begin to see God, how powerful he is, and we let God become more God and us less dependent upon us. Lord, help me. I, I, I sense what you're saying, but I, help me, show me how to say what you're saying, what to, how, to, how to bring about spiritual things with spiritual words or, or such like that. And thank you for this glorious church, this body that you love so much. Okay. I am known in God, in Christ. Without Christ, I have no hope, no covenant, no access. I was born into Israel by being joined in through Christ. In Christ, there is no Jew nor Gentile, rich or slave, Greek, barbarian, just one new man. In Christ, God knows me by seeing Christ over me. When God took Christ, the son of man, and said, you are to be the sacrifice for sin. You are to drink this cup I'm going to give you, and you're going to be baptized with the baptism I'm going to bring you. And then when Jesus surrendered, submitted, we think often that what, what did Jesus accomplish on the cross? Nothing but surrender to the Father's will. It was the Father who, who determined to become the judge to his son. He, I'm going to give you as a sacrifice for the world to be saved. And Jesus said, okay, I don't want this at all, but if this is my assignment for you, I will do so. Your will be done. And so... He literally is carrying, and this is what I, I woke up seeing so strongly. He's carrying everything we're carrying that we don't need to carry anymore. He carried everything. We can transfer anything to him now, and he will receive it as his because it was placed upon him, whether it's our sin, our disobedience, our, our uncertainty about the future, where do I turn, what do I do? In Christ, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, majesty on high. He's, he's the Messiah, the Christ. He's the Lord. He's the Savior. He's the high priest of our confession. He has done once an offering, and he brought the blood into the tabernacle and the heavenly, and he's made accessible all of us to come into the holy of holies. And it's all, even as we approach God, he appears in the in the face of God over us. We come to God through him. He makes intercession over us. There's not anything that's out of his jurisdiction. Everything is his. Debt is his. Lack is his. Sin is his. Fear is his. Silver and gold. Everything. Everything is his. And what I'm being required to submit to is truth that it is his, so that I'm not doing anything except accepting the words that he's speaking that are especially the words over his. There's nothing that I do that allows God to do something other than if I do what I see Jesus saying to do, but that's because Jesus has said he wants to do it. And if I fail to do what Jesus, I think Jesus is telling me to do, and then I wonder, oh no, that's a lie. 
There is no adding to the kingdom by your great effort or my effort. It is done because of Jesus. It was settled. It was, it was the, new, the new creation is a new creation that has no limitation by the old creation. I have to walk through stuff. I have trauma. I've got drama. I'm aware of how frail I am. My soul can carry me off onto a tangent faster than anything. But that's the journey of salvation for me on this journey on the earth is that learn to the things I'm going through to listen under the word of God all the time and not let what's happening drive me away from the one I'm in fellowship with. To press through the thing I'm going through and say, I don't care what's happening. I want to be in fellowship. You see, if there's anything on, in this life that I still need to have come out my way, I guarantee you one thing, that's not coming out that way. There's only one way. His name is Yahweh, Amen. Jesus, the way. And, and you see, because if I go out of forgiveness, I go into, I go into ju justification. If I go into justification, I am now guilty of all the law that I'm not fulfilling, and I'm under a curse. And that re this just starts over again. It's, it's not that it's dissipated. It's just it no longer applies if I live in a, that I died to that. But dying to that is, is difficult because it requires complete submission to, the, to, the, to Jesus and what he has accomplished. And, and to study what he has accomplished so that I can submit to what he's doing. So that's why I look at the miracles. Well, that a woman, a Syrophician woman, presses in and says, I want you to deliver my daughter. She's demonized. I don't know any mother who hasn't thought that happened before. But he says, no, it's not good for me to give the truth, you know. And he says, yes, it's, yes, it's, yes, yes. But I, I don't, I'm a dog and I want a crumb and a crumb is more than enough than get my, deliver my daughter. And she says, great is your faith. Your daughter's delivered. <laughs> Jesus had a fellowship with the Father that we are to have with him. We are to know him in his word, by his spirit, Everything that is the Father's is Jesus, and everything that Jesus has, he wants to reveal to us by the Spirit. It's a mystery. That means it's initiated by God, and it isn't something that everybody can know. That's why to those who don't know, it seems like foolishness. And to those who do know, it's precious, valuable, and more important than anything in all the gold in the world. One word, one boy, one moment with Jesus. It can take every one of us in whatever I'm facing, and say, okay, let's just remove it. Or he can take every one of us in whatever we're going through and says, let's just enjoy me more than that. He's, he, there's nothing that can restrict his goodness and his mercy and his faithfulness, except if we get offended and then we won't let go, and then we hold people in account, or we get in competition and say, I'm of this super group, and you're not, so I don't want to, want to be with you because you touch me and you'll contaminate my super group anointing. When in fact, we just, Paul was doing miracles while he was weak, sick, and afraid. We have to stop this idea that I project who I am. That is the absolute opposite of Jesus Christ. When he came to his hometown, he said, you're going to say this parable to me. Physician, heal yourself. Physician, heal yourself. Do what you did over there. Prove it. And he just got off the Mount of Temptation, and the devil had said, you know, if you're the son of God, jump off the temple and you'll be capped by angels. And he said, don't tempt God. You don't tempt God. You don't have question, is God with me in this situation? He, of course, he's with me. We use our mouth and we declare, you're with me right now. And you have a good outcome. And in fact, here's the outcome I already see. I'm going to come as an overcomer through this. I'm going to grow, grow in relationship with you. I'm going to have joy unspeakable. I'm going to have my soul get saved. I'm going to have a glorious testimony because of your faithfulness, goodness, and mercy. And if I go and say, God, where are you? Why aren't you here? What's happening? What's wrong? I'm tempting God. Are you really with me? So, so say with me, imagine with me, the God who took Israel out of Egypt is the God who took us out of sin. 
took us out of captivity to a taskmaster that put us in cruel bondage. Whatever the bondage of our sin was, we were pulled out of it and taken out of it. He blessed us with resources. He blessed us as a people. And then he leads us to, a, to, a, to an impossible thing to cross, which is a Red Sea. What he's developing, a humble people that live under the word of God, is that the same God that released the same miracle of deliverance now will be the same God who will do this next miracle of deliverance. But as I am, I am just like each Israel. The first thing they said is, God brought us here to kill us. You see, if I think that, which I do think that many times, if I feel that, that means my soul is unsubmitted to Jesus Christ and is jumping to conclusions concerning the outcome of a situation that looks negative for me. Instead of, well, we're, 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 I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to do something. And yet nobody had that faith yet because they were still slaves in their minds. And so the same God that delivers Israel through the Red Sea and kills the Egyptian army in the Red Sea is the same God that leads them to some water that's bitter three days later. And they're going, oh, God, I can't believe you brought to me the bitter water. And he, and it's the same God that brings them to no water. It's the same God that brings them to, uh, you know, to discover the, 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 the provision of manna. It's just, he's the same God. He brought them to the promised land. And he took them into them, let them taste the fruit and see the giants. And all they could see was the giants and not the fruit. And so they said, God just brought us here to kill us again. Is that your testimony? You feel it that way. You feel it. I mean, I'm honest. I always say, every, every crisis, I have to question, where are you, Jesus? And I feel like he wants to say, same place I was before. I'm on a throne. I dwell in your heart by faith. And so I got, like this happened without his knowledge. Or the fact that trouble means that he's absent. Trouble does not mean he's absent. Trouble means he's ready. He's ready to be the mighty warrior who saves. But it's a renewal of the mind. It doesn't, see, my soul collects all its information through the world I'm living in. And all the things I read, all the things I see, all the things I feel. Plus all the memories that are stirred in my soul and the trauma that's inside my heart. And so I see a, 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 a twisted stick on a hiking path and I jump back because I think it's a snake. It has past imagery. And I have to retrain to say, uh, I am today rising up accepted in the Lord. I'm accepted in the beloved. Everybody say that. I am accepted in the beloved. Nothing I can do to make myself accepted. I have been accepted. There's nothing I can do to undo what God has done for me and the inheritance he's given in me and the faith. It's just, I'm accepted. But I have to work at that. Not work at it to prove it, but to accept it. See, faith for me is accepting truth. Not trying to believe it, just receive it. Or submit to it. If Jesus said all sin through the, the, the writer of Hebrew and through the Father, his own words, and through Paul, and sin is remitted, and where the remission of sin is, there's no longer an offering, then I don't have to worry about what I, where I failed, I just have to continue to return to Jesus' sufficiency and let his resurrection life come instead of the, the death. And if I'm experiencing death, which I am, because we will walk in the weakness of the cross and in the power of his resurrection. We will go in and out. Because to know the power, you have to fellowship with the suffering. And to come into the power of the, the resurrection life, you have to be conformed to his death. And our journey through the earth gets to experience all dimensions of it. And they don't come in a linear order. They go like this, circle, 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 circle. And I don't like it. I don't want it. I want a Christianity that makes me big, bold, and brave, and rich. I want to be the rich young ruler. But a rich young ruler had enough sense to know he didn't have eternal life. Because he was gained it through the works of the law and not through the... Trust in the Lord. And many of us in this room, we have lost big stuff and you're still 
pining away at your loss, living in misery. You close your eyes and you think of what is that? You dream about what happened, why that happened. And, and it all, I'm feeling with, with everything. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. You're not going to be in a different place because what somebody did to you. Because your inheritance is in Christ according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. No one can take our future from us. Except we. We park in that rest spot and live in misery, refusing to be comforted. Holy Spirit comes and says, hey, I'm full of joy. I'm full of peace. I'm full of victory. I'm full of triumph. I've got all the gifts of, of, the, of Jesus' victory to give to you. Let's go. No. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> and we do. Don't, don't, I do. I do. That's why the other day, I, I, my mind was just going. <laughs> you know, if I stay out of the word and stay out of the script and out of prayer, and I don't even want to pray without the word anymore because my, my prayers go squirrely. I just, want to, I just want to absorb the word. I just want to hear the word. And so I was just, I had just a squirrely, squirrely thinking. What about this? Are you really here? Will you be there? What about this? I just found out about this problem. How well it's going to happen about that? Are you there? And, and I'm not living in the supremacy of the victory of the triumph of Christ. But I can't sustain it by thinking it. So I plug, put my earbuds in and I put the Psalms on. And I just listen to them, and I let them be my voice speaking back to God. This is who you are. You rule the sea. You made the world. You took the water that was on top of the mountain, and you made it go down the valleys, and you put borders on the sea, and you said it cannot go any further. And I, and I start exalting him. See, Isaiah 35 is the core of the returning that we're entering into, that we've been growing up in. Returning and rest will be is your salvation and quietness confidence will be your strength but you would not you said no we're going to flee on horses swift horses he said well great those who pursue you will be on swifter horses <laughs> and then he says i will wait so i can be gracious to you and i will be exalted so i can have mercy on you you see the reason god's not doing anything for you is you're not making him big enough if you don't believe him, I don't believe him. And then I question him, where are you? Where are you? How could you let this happen to me? Well, I live in a fallen world. The devil hates us. And all faith has to be tested for it to have the substance of proven gold. It's proven that he's faithful and good and his word is true. And I can live in the word even when I can't see it being done. And I can do... So it's just a part of learning to live in joy and unspeakable, full of glory. That's where we are. And then we stop because the devil knows how to get you. Oh, what you did was wrong. You didn't hear God. You didn't obey him. Now you're going to have to start over again. No, you never start over again. You start Jesus. You never start again. You don't have to go back and pay for what you did. Jesus paid for what you did. You have to repent and return to Jesus and submit to his victory. Does that make sense? It's, it's harder than the law. It's harder than the law because the law at least says, you know, just do this, you'll get that. Okay, I'll do this and I'll get that. But we didn't tell us that you have to also do all the other things you don't know about. And anything you don't do means you're under the curse of it all. That's why we're, we're walking anemic, broken, because we're trying to know God in a way he no longer knows us or wants to know us. He wants to know us in his son. He knows me in his son. He knows me in his son. And if I accept his son's victory, it's my victory. If I accept his son's position at the right hand of majesty on high, that's where I get to sit. If I accept his goodness as, as, as forever new, mercy forever new. You know, it says that we build ourselves up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. And it says we keep ourselves inside the love of God by anticipating the mercy of Jesus Christ. Are you expecting mercy? I am. Do I have that because it's just ruminating in my soul? Not at all. I just have to expose my soul back to the truth and say, soul, listen, we're going to agree with this. I know you don't want to, but it's not your job to decide what you agree with. It's my job. 
I'm led by the Spirit. And this is the Bible I've decided is truth. And I'm going to declare over this. So, so bless the Lord about this. Bless him that he, he heals all your diseases. Bless him that he forgives all your iniquities. Bless him that he's always taking good care of you. Bless him, bless him, bless him. I'm going to close because, beloved, Cammy spoke the word of the Lord to us. When the, when the rich young ruler, no, it's not the rich young ruler, when the, when the debtor who owed $10 million or plus was called to count, it was so that he could come to recognize that he was in a deficit. He could never pay it back. You cannot pay back your deficit. You cannot get others to pay back their sin. You cannot undo what you already did. And it doesn't matter because what we're learning to do is I'm in Jesus Christ. And he's the beginning, the middle, and the end. He's my salvation, my healing, my deliverance. And I submit myself to the truth of his word. And I, I accept what, his, what, you, what God says about his son. And I accept what God says I am in the son. And I'm in the son. And I'm healed in the son. I'm delivered in the son. I'm redeemed in the son. I'm joyful in the son. I'm peaceful in the son. I'm alive. And we just start. That's the one thing we do. It's just the one thing to receive, to accept, to acknowledge truth of what God says concerning his son. This is the testimony that God gave uh, concerning his son, 1 John 5. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not, does not have life. So to, to embrace, to, to pull in. To... So Cammie said, before the, the trumpet blows, begin to raise your voice and let your voice be a trumpet and tell God how big he is, how powerful he is, how wonderful he is. It goes on in Isaiah 35 and says, you're, you're no longer going to be pushed into a corner anymore. Even though I'm going to take you through some affliction and you're going to have some bread of adversity, but you're not going to be pushed in the corner. You're going to be a different person. No more victims. And then I'm going to take you through this thing and there's a voice that you're going to learn to hear. My voice is right, left, turn to the right, turn to the left, go forward. And then the most exciting thing comes in that training for reigning. One day we start looking around and go, you know what? I'm carrying a whole bunch of weights that I don't need. I just don't need all these. In fact, they're more than weights. They're belief systems that I have to be this and I have to do that. They're idols. They're grief. They're sorrows. And we'll start casting down our idols, throwing them away, throwing them away. You can't throw away what you don't see as an idol until you see it as an idol. Does that make sense? Yes. The, the, the things that are, in, that are in, in contending over our souls are real. They're, we believe them. But Jesus is, has the capacity just to start to be like this, the sun of righteousness that begins to become the day dawn, morning star. It takes, it takes practice, but it is, it's accessible. He is accessible. Everything the Father did to him, he now it will not do to you. And everything the Father brought to him in the resurrection is now ours in the resurrection. And everything Jesus learned as a son through suffering and obedience, we get to learn through suffering into obedience. But we learn that I, I'm not trying to prevent problems. I'm, going, I'm anticipating resurrection. 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 Resurrection, resurrection, resurrection. And, and, and I, I may lose everything in the journey, but I gain Christ, and I have no righteousness of my own, so I have nothing to care about. <laughs> Let's stand together. It's, it's not a decision as it's a practice, and it's not a practice as perfection, as submission, and Jesus had to submit and become our sin. Now we have to submit and become his righteousness. We have to acknowledge his sufficiency, his supremacy, his beauty. We have real stories that are really bad, and they want to hold us down and say, you can never go from here. And God says, why not? And then we say, well, because every time I try to get up and get my miracle, somebody gets to the water first and it never happens. And then he, Jesus just says, stand up. Oh, there's so much of Jesus right now present. All of him. All of him. 
Every heavenly blessing is in Christ. Full acceptance. Blameless. You are blameless right now. If anything's telling you you're not blameless, if you call on Jesus' name and you feel condemned and weight, that's not God. That's a lie. Because Jesus is what makes us blameless. He makes us accepted in the beloved. We've been adopted as sons to the Father through Jesus. He's summing up every part of life to come under submission to Him. We don't have to try to be perfect. We are perfect. We're just learning to accept His perfection. Jesus. Really, seriously. What is it you need Him to be? He's everything. Everything. There's nothing that has to be made right for it to be right. There's nothing that has to be changed for it to change. There's nothing that has to be fixed on this level for God to override it on all levels. We just return to Him and enter His rest. You are the author and the finisher. You are beginning and the end. I love you. I love you. You are the Alpha and Omega. Your God eternal without end. Yes, Lord. You are the author and the finisher. You are beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and Omega. Your God eternal without end. You write my story inside your glory. You write my story Inside your glory, you write my story. Inside your glory, you write my story. Inside your glory. Praise you. I, no, I'm, I'm good. Dana Garner brought Larry to church. Larry got saved, found Jesus Christ, and got baptized. And now Larry has a prayer that he wants God to do for Dana. And he wants us to agree with him. Can we do that? Can we agree with them? Okay. Go ahead. One, two, one, two. One, three, three. Yeah, go ahead. One, two. Can you hear me? Yeah. Dear Lord in heaven, watch over Dana during her surgery. Comfort her and keep her safe. In your name, we ask, we ask for your vigilance and your love and your love everlasting. Amen. 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 Go ahead, say your prayer. Everybody say a prayer. Everybody say a prayer, what God is doing, who He is. Lord God, I agree with Nick's declaration of Joel that everything that was devoured by your great armies, you will bring the restoration of it in far greater fashion. And you will come with the great awakening in our lives, each and every heart. Go with us as we go home. Train us as we reign with you in prayer. Let us submit to the script and live in that one truth that Jesus Christ is everything. The head, not the tail. That you are the fullness that fills all of us in your fullness. We receive you. 
we receive you. We receive you. Finding our children, finding work, finding the finances, bringing the manna, bringing the healing. We're not doubting you. We're calling you here, present, at this present moment. You're fully active in this moment. We worship you. And so we'll continue. Amen. Bless you guys. Love you.